So thanks for taking the time to talk with us on the, the day of your opening here at the thanks. Tom Thompson. Thanks, Mike. Um, and looking at a lot of your past work, uh, you know, I, I obviously there's uh, you've referenced Tom Thompson. You've looked at his uh, the myth, his work previously. Sure. Uh, in pieces like New Lake Water Cooler, uh, Northern River, Jack Pine, which is actually in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. But you've done some new work here for this exhibition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been an ongoing interest in my art practice for five or six years um, in terms of this body of work, but, you know, even going back to a previous life when I was a landscape painter, um, going out into the woods with my painting box and doing oils on panels, it's, it's uh, yeah, this lifelong love for me. So, um, yeah, this is a new body of work that kind of continues these conversations, and uh, really excited to have had a chance to work with the collection here. Right. Did, uh, um what what uh, pieces did you pick out of the collection to uh, to develop works from or engage with? Yeah, um, three works by Tom Thompson, um, and um, one of them is actually in the wall right behind you. But, uh, <laughs> we um, a lot of this this work actually got its had its genesis with an object that's in the collection rather than a work, uh, and it's a pantograph that uh, it's a, an old drafting tool that Tom Thompson would have used for copying drawings. And I had never seen one before. I saw it in the showcase here on the site visit and went home and did some research on it. And um, I thought it was a very sort of apt metaphor, like this, this idea of sort of copying one thing and how these, how these images sort of you know, translate through history from generation to generation. I wanted to replicate in a drawing series, um, which um, the, uh, the Tom Thompson Gallery was very keen on helping me facilitate, which I appreciated. But, um, we would start out with an original painting, and using a pantograph, I copied it, um, and made a first generation line drawing, and uh, then I used that and copied that, and made a second generation drawing, and it starts to kind of um, dissolve and become indistinct, and by the third or fourth generation, uh, kind of amazing things happen. It just looks almost fog-like or smoke-like. It, it stops referencing the original source material. It stops looking like a landscape, but it starts looking like um, almost like a roar shock test. It's right. like whatever. Like you see a million other things in it too. So it's right. So a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, if if you take away the uh, the the steps in between and look at the original and the last copy, there's, uh, there's very yeah, there's <laughs> very sort of disparate. Right. But, um, yeah. I was, you know, and. In that that last that last image, which just looks like this, I don't know, almost like an automatic line drawing. Um, you know, we, we kind of see everything in that. Like it's it's sort of like this foggy, nebulous kind of image that uh, I, I guess for me, I, I, I sort of think of you know, like the German Romantic painters, like Caspar David Friedrich, who would you know he used fog as like a shorthand for you know all these like you know profound things that we just can't wrap our heads around, but that are meaningful in our lives. So, right. You know, I, I think it's a very reductive process. This this painting or this drawing series, but um, I think that like the rather than sort of curtailing possibilities, it actually opens up a whole lot of other ones for me. So. Now, so, sort of hearing your your talk about this piece and actually seeing it here, uh, what what sort of comes to my mind is. Uh, uh, say the original painting, you know, Birch's 1913 or whatever the title is. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, when people viewed it at that time, uh, and now when people view it, you know, 80 years later, 90 years later, yep. uh, is there any sort of similarity between your your immediate process here with a copy of a copy and and what you see is so different from the original, yeah. but it, does that translate as well to the viewership of that that yeah. original painting? Absolutely. I mean, there there is an enormous gap between like how you know these these things were received at the time, and then now how they're seen uh, as historic documents, right? Like there's there's a, a huge space, and I, I think of that as like a, a very valuable space for for engaging in discourse, right? Like we can we can sort of look back and. You know, speculate on what the, the motivations were behind these paintings or you know, how they were seen, how they were presented to the world, that, that context at the time. And we can sort of almost use that as a, a foil 
you know, for looking at the situation now and to see how far we've become. Right. In fact, that's very much what this other piece here is about. The um, It's a painting um, by uh, Lauren Harris that we put on a conveyor belt. Um, this conveyor belt, even though it doesn't look like it, it's actually in motion as we speak right now. Um, I am interested in, in this sort of idea of like how um, how these things move through the world. So the, the short explanation is that uh, we're of course sitting on a tectonic plate here <laughs> in the gallery, in all of North America for that matter, and it's moving at roughly one inch per year westbound. Um, again, I can't feel that happening, but apparently it is, according to geologists. Um, this painting is on a conveyor belt that's moving one inch per year eastbound, so it's counteracting that movement. Um, effectively, it's staying perfectly still, more still than we are, um, even though to us it appears like it's in motion. Um, over the course of the show, it's going to probably move you know, an eighth of an inch at the most, but if we were to leave it for 30 years, then it would be all the way to the other end of that conveyor belt, right. and we would see this, this sort of like widening gap between um, the painting and the world that has sort of changed around it. Um, I see that as like a really interesting space for um, for having conversations about, right? Like it's, there, there's like this, um, it becomes almost like a, a richer discursive space right. uh, the longer we wait. So in addition to uh, coming and working directly with pieces from the permanent collection here, uh, you know, looking at some of your previous works, mm -hmm. you, you travel to sites uh, to work directly on location yeah. uh, in the field. That's, that's often a starting point for the work. I, um, I'm not so much a, a studio artist that sort of makes things and then puts it out into the world. I, I generally sort of, you know, find a, a context or a you know, whatever it is, a community or a, a gallery, so some sort of a collection, something to respond to, and then um, mull it over for a little while, and then figure out what I want to say about it, and then yeah. come back and, and reinsert it into that specific context. But you know, almost everything's site specific or context specific. Right. Um, and I like that. I mean, it's very much a sort of a collaborative process. So if I were to be sitting alone in my studio, it would be like that. that sort of <laughs> like a capital C conceptualist. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's that sort of panic of you know staring at a blank canvas, you know, so to speak. And um, I like being given sort of parameters. You know, to say, well, we want something that responds to this collection or this history or um, something that will resonate with this community. Right. So with your uh, excursions and, and site-specific work, one of the pieces in this exhibition, uh, Jack Pine. Uh, eight-foot camera crane. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a site-specific piece, and it's here. Can you talk a bit about that work? Yeah, this um, this is a video that I shot at the site of uh, the site where Tom Thompson painted his, uh, his iconic Jack Pine painting, which is in the National Gallery now. And uh, I mean, it's this very loaded site. Right? Like it's just so um, you know, so kind of majestic, and it's you know imbued with all this these sort of national symbols. Um, almost instantly recognizable to, to a lot of people. But um, whereas Tom Thompson walked to this site with a small painting box and, and his uh, you know, panels, I wanted to use the tools that I've been using lately, which is you know, a, uh, an HD video camera and um, you know, this eight foot long camera jib. <laughs> and of course, it's much, much more cumbersome than, than the painting box. And, um, this is 100 pounds of gear that I trekked to this site. And when I set it up, um, you know, I, I was interested in like the, like literally the friction between the subject and, you know, the way that I had chosen to make this piece, you know, this, this equipment uh, literally comes, uh, you know, brushes up against the trees. And, you know, at some points it, it gets um, you know, physically stopped by branches that entwine it. Um, so it's very slapstick. It's meant to be funny. I hope people laugh at it. Um, <laughs> But it's um, you know it's looking at you know, how these symbols um, you know how how uh, they're congruent or not congruent with you know the way that we make art or think about art now, which I think is one of the mandates of this particular gallery space, the, the counterpoint gallery space. Right. Is very interested in these conversations. Well, I, th I think that's a, a very interesting uh, and and maybe a brave move for a, for a gallery to to uh, introduce the counterpoint. Oh, absolutely. Right, rather than uh, 
you know, it'd be pretty easy to go Tom Thompson, Tom Thompson. Yeah. Everything's great about Tom Thompson and the great uh, the group of seven, but to, yeah. you know, to invite uh, alternate viewpoints, uh, even at times critiques. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And I think Tom Thompson is great, but I think, I think it's great for different reasons now than, you know, in 1915, 16, 17, when he first started making this work. I think we, we do have to constantly ask ourselves the question of, you know, like, what, what does it mean to us now? And, you know, how can this uh, be relevant to our lives? And, um, like, this world, it's a, it's a vastly different world 100 years later on, right? So, um, you know, we, we do have to look at you know, how, how it fits in, how it dovetails. A related project, I just, um, I'm just wrapping up a fundraising edition for the Kitchener Waterloo Art Gallery. They also have a Tom Thompson painting, one of his earlier ones. Um, and I took a section of the painting, which is about this big, it's about the size of a you know, pea, and I blew it up quite large. It's, it's going to be a photo about this big. Um, it's really sort of the intersection of two or three brush strokes, but. Um, when you look at it up close, you can see all like the, the cracks and the you know like these are, it's sort of a conservator's nightmare like the the, um, the environmental forces that have acted on this painting. Um, but I find it you know sort of as a as a metaphor, I find it fascinating right that that here's this depiction of nature, this canvas that is you know also very much sort of entrenched in like with the same forces that are affecting it. Right? So you know like forces of hot and cold expansion, contraction, humidity, these are all acting on these canvases. And um, the net effect of this is that, that this, um, this little tiny section of painting, it actually looks like a, like a river valley or a landscape. Like it looks like this incredible sort of topography. Um, and I love the idea of like the, you know, the, the small, um, you know, being like representing the, right. the big. Right, yeah. So. And so that that's a, an addition that you, you've produced for the the Kitchener Water the Art Gallery. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be an edition of 25, I think, 25 photo. But also, you know, relating to uh, this conveyor belt piece, it's, you know, it's sort of, again, sort of situating it in, in almost like geological time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, John. It's been a pleasure to t talk Thanks. with you, and uh, I look forward to uh, looking at the exhibition more, and uh, good luck with your future projects. Yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you.